So welcome everybody to this latest video on 162 Maths and in this video we're continuing with our series of GCSE revision looking at the AQA topic test higher and in this video we'll be looking and focusing on certs. Now one thing I do need to bear in mind is that a copy of the questions will be in the description below for you to download have a go at the questions before we go through the answers but also one thing I did notice when going through the questions is that there wasn't a question on a more complex rationalizing the denominator question which may appear on the higher paper so I certainly would revise that topic I wouldn't say that this particular set of questions is inclusive of everything you need to know about SIRDS so I would strongly recommend that you watch the videos I've produced on SIRDS as a teaching lesson but also maybe looking at the AS level SIRDS video as well. So let's get started on this AQA topic test on SIRDS. Now just to let you know that I'm going to try and avoid using a calculator only because with regards to SIRDS it tends to appear on more non-calculator papers because obviously you can do and simplify and do manipulations with SIRDS on your calculator or modern calculators now anyway, especially on the Casio ones. So looking at question 1a it says simplify root 15 to the power of 4. Now if you just write down what root 15 actually represents or root 15 to the power 4 so it's root 15 times root 15 times root 15 times root 15 now in terms of root 15 squared well that's just going to be 15 because obviously you've got root 15 uh, squared and that square root cancel with squared and then here we've got again exactly the same so we've got root 15 squared the square root cancels with the square so technically what we're working out is 15 times 15 which is 225 for question 1b again all we want to do here is simplify or ration, uh, simplify this third so again what we want to do is think to ourselves there's a couple of ways in which we can do this now we can see this as either using one of the laws of thirds we can write this as 96 over 8 or we can try and simplify both the top and the bottom and it doesn't really matter which one you choose so for example if I was to do 96 divided by 8 I should have the answer of 12 so what this then becomes is the square root of 12 I then think to myself well and again if you're not sure where I've got 12 from all I've done is just do 96 divided by 8 and then from this we can then write this as root 4 times root 3 which then becomes 2 root 3 as our final answer. Now looking at question 1c all we need to do here is just simplify the 2 so here we've got root 18 is equal to root 9 times root 2 which is 3 root 2 and if I then do the same for root 50 I've got root 50 equals root 25 times root 2 which is 5 root 2 so then that all then becomes 3 root 2 times 5 root 2 3 times 5 is 15 and root 2 times root 2 is root 4 which then becomes 5 times 2 uh, 15 times 2 rather which gives me an answer of 30 and then question 2 it says circle the value that is equivalent to root 20 plus root 45 so again root 20 is root 4 times root 5 which is 2 root 5 and then root 45 is root 9 times root 5 which is 3 root 5 and if I'm adding those two things together how many root 5's am I going to end up with? Well I'm going to end up with 5 giving me my correct answer as the third option. Moving on to question 3 it says circle the value of the equivalent that is to this. Now again when we are dividing like well, the best thing for you to do is to write this as a fraction so I've got 6 over root, uh, 6 root 15 rather divided by 3 root 5 well 6 over 3 if I just kind of write it like this hopefully it makes a little bit of sense so looking at this 6 over 3 well that's going to be 2 and root 15 divided by root 5 is root 3 so I'm looking for 2 root 3 which is our first option Question 4, it says show that uh, can be written as an integer, so we've got root 3 plus root 27 squared, and so the key thing to remember here is recognising that this is a double bracket, so this is root 3 plus root 27 times root 3 plus root 27. Now, um, again, working through this, let's just have a look what we've got. Well, if we just recognise that root 27 can be written as root 9 times root 3 which is going to be 3 root 3 you can swap the root 27 for root 3 just so that we're dealing with smaller numbers and then we've got less simplifying to do so I'm going to write this as root 3 plus 3 root 3 
and then root 3 plus 3 root 3. Now using double brackets and expand the brackets out, what do we get? Well, remember that third times the third will just give you the number. And obviously if the number's the, the inside the square root the same, it's just going to equal that number. So here I'm just going to write it out in full. So I've got root 9 plus 3 root 9 plus 3 root 9 plus 9 root 9. Now working these out separately, well root 9 is 3 plus, and then that's going to be 3 times 3 plus 3 times 3 plus 9 times 3. And then working that out, what I get is I get 3 plus 9 plus 9 plus 27, which is going to give me 30, which is going to give me 48 as a final answer, which again is an integer. For question five, it says rationalize the denominator and simplify. So when we rationalize the denominator, all we want to do is multiply the numerator and the denominator by the denominator. And obviously, if you've got a plus or a minus, then just change the sign. So this then becomes, and again, it's really important that you do write this because that alone would get you one mark. And then simplifying this, we get 24 root 6 over root 36, which then becomes 24 root 6 over 6. And then I can then simplify uh, by cancelling out the 24 and the 6. So that becomes a 4. That becomes a 1. So what I end up is with 4 root 6. Then moving on to question 6. It says, here are the first four terms of a geometric progression. Work out the 10th term. Give your answer in terms of R. Now, again, when you're working with a geometric progression, what you're doing to get from one term to another, you are multiplying it by something. So to turn root r into r, what do you need to multiply it by? Well, I need to multiply it by root r. So here, our common ratio is root r. Now, in terms of working out what our tenth term is going to be, well, it's going to be our first term. Oh, I don't know why I put a 5 there, so let's get rid of that. So we've got r, so root r to the power of 10. Now, in terms of this, depending on how well you are with indices, well, again, looking at this, well, it's just going to be r to the power of 5. Again, if you're not too sure, what you could have done is converted the root 5, if you know indices, as root to the power of a half, and then you've got a half times 10, which is r5. Then looking at question 6b, it says when r is 8, work out the sum of the first four terms. Give your answer in the form of a, and then we just need to factorise the answer. So looking at the first four terms, what we're looking at, and if r is 8, then what we've got is we've got root 8 plus 8 plus 8 root 8 plus 64. And all I've done there is just substituted r equals 8 into these terms. And because we're working out the sum, I've added them together. So let's have a look at simplifying all of this. Now I know that root 8 is equal to root 4 times root 2, which is 2 root 2. So if I just get rid of those. So this is going to be 2 root 2 plus 8 plus 8 lots of 2 root 2 plus 64. So combining all of these things together, well I've got 2 root 2 and this is going to be 16 root 2. And let me just write all of those together. So if I combine this with this, what do I get? Well I'm going to end up with 18 root 2 plus and then I'm going to end up with 8 plus 64 which is going to give me 72. Now the question is asking me to factorize this. So I'm going to take my common factor out in which my common factor here is going to be 18. So that then becomes 18 and then open our bracket and we've got root 2 plus and it's going to be uh, 4. And there is my final answer. So this would be my final answer in which I've then got to factorise it. So all I've done from this to this is then factorise it. Then moving on to question 7. So here we've got more of a problem solving question. It says all lengths are in centimetres. Work out the area of this rectangle. Give your answer in the form of a plus b root 2 where a and b are integers. Now to work out the area of a rectangle all I need to do is just multiply the two lengths together. So what I've got to work out is 3 plus root 2 times 1 plus 2 root 2 and again using my loops I've got 3 plus 6 root 2 plus 1 root 2 plus 2 root 4 and then simplifying this well I've got 3 plus 7 root 2 plus and then 2 times 2 which is 4 
then that gives me 7 plus 7 root 2. And then moving on to our final question. So it says, for a right angle triangle with sides A, B, and C, Pythagoras' theorem states, and we've got A squared plus B squared equals C squared. It says, is this triangle right angled? So what we need to do is for this question is we need to square this, square this side, add them up, and then see if the square, if square of the answer gives me this, or square root of the answer gives me that. So looking at this then what we then need to do is do two things so let's just start by splitting this up so first of all let's do a squared plus b squared so this is a this is b this is c and on this side what we're going to do is we're going to do c squared now if it's a right angle then those two sides are going to should be the same so a squared plus b squared well that's going to be three plus root three squared plus two plus root 12 squared now again, in terms of this, root 12, you should be able to know, is going to be 2 root 2. Uh, actually, it's 2 root 3, rather. And so you can either swap that just so that we're going to end up with lots of root 3s. Now, in terms of expanding this out, then what you should have is, so we should have 9 plus 6 root 3 plus root 9, and plus, and then squaring this we should have 4 plus and it's going to be 4 root 3 no it's going to, it's going to be 2 8 root 3 is it let's have a look we've got let's just do that properly you don't want to mess this up so rather than writing root 12 let's go for 2 root 3 instead not that it makes a difference it's just Easy for you to understand. So expand that, I'll get 4 plus, uh, it's going to be 4 root 3 plus 4 root 3 plus 4 root 9. So simplifying all of this, I get 4 plus 8 root 3 plus 4 times 3, which is 12, which gives me 16 plus 8 root 3. So here we've got 16. plus 8 root 3 and if I simplify what I've written in blue here and that's going to turn into a 3 uh, that's 9 plus 6 root 3 adding all of those two things together so this and this what am I going to get well I'm going to get 9 plus 3 which is 12 plus uh, 16 is 28 and then 6 root 3 plus 8 root 3 is going to give me 14 root 3 so now let's have a look at what this side equals so here we've got c squared so here I'm going to end up with 5 plus root 3 squared which is 5 plus root what I'm doing there here I've got 5 plus root 3 5 plus root 3 and then from this what do I get well I'm going to get 25 plus 5 root 3 plus 5 root 3 plus root 9 and then adding them all up I get 25 plus 10 root 3 plus 3 which then gives me 28 plus 10 root 3 now is that the same no so our final answer then so as these two things aren't the same it means then so as the two sides are not the same the triangle is not right angle. And there we go.